Sirens. Waiting for the sirens to pass. <laughs> Hello my lovelies and welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather and this is the happenings with HAP. HAP meaning my initials. So since my channel is geared towards books, movies, and TV, I wanted to start a series where I discuss movie adaptations or TV adaptations. I decided to title the series, Is the Adaptation Worth It? Sometimes people only wanna watch a movie adaptation, sometimes only wanna read the books, and there's not always a lot of overlap. So my attempt with the series is to kind of cover both camps of movie lovers as well as book purists and see if these adaptations live up to the integrity of the book but also is just a really good and entertaining film or TV depending on what we're talking about. I hope you guys like this idea. So let's get started with our first film that we are going to have a little look through and that is 2020's Emma by Autumn DeWilde. One thing I love about this one is the title isn't just Emma, it's Emma period as a statement because Emma is very much the statement girl of her village. And this film itself really made a statement. It's 2020, there's been so many versions of Emma. There's of course the very famous version of Emma from 1996 starring Gwyneth Paltrow. Then there's also the 2009 BBC television version starring Romola Gorai. So the kind of question is why would we need another version Version in this day and age. Autumn de Wilde very much set out to make an Emma that was period correct as well as appealing to today's kind of millennial TikTok audiences. And I feel like you can really see that in the set design. The set design very much reminds me of Wes Anderson. It is bright, it's colorful, Every little detail is very much deliberate. And even the framing of scenes, the actors sometimes become props in the room as well. And it's probably one of the more beautiful Austin adaptations I've seen. And that also goes into the costuming. As someone that loves period films, the costumes in this film are absolutely gorgeous. They are relatively period correct. They have these bright colors that we usually don't get to see in Austin. A lot of Austin adaptations, very white, very earth tony, but they really bumped it up for these costumes, in particular in regards to Emma's character because she is kind of the queen bee of her village. And of course she'd be in these bright, beautiful cuts and beautiful colored dresses. And the men as well are dressed very period correct. They have the very tight pants, they have the high starched collars. If you are a costume lover, this film is a dream because it's absolutely beautiful. The whole film itself is just eye candy. Now on to the casting. And so my favorite character of the film was Mr. Woodhouse himself, played amazingly by Bill Nye. His character is the comic relief of the film and he's so absolutely funny. The same type of characterization where he's basically hypochondriac and Every little thing has a draft. There's a lot of visual sight gags of him being screened in around the fireplace to make sure that he doesn't have a chill. Bill Nye really elevated that role, which could have been a very, you know, whatever type of side character into something absolutely hilarious. He steals every scene he's in because the, his humor is so dry throughout that it's just perfection. And his scenes with Emma are so touching because this is a man that still lives with his youngest daughter. His eldest has moved away and has a family of her own and he likes things the way he likes them. And he really doesn't feel like he'd be able to function without his daughter. And so they do have this really wonderful relationship. And there was a couple of scenes in this film that actually showed that and him attempting to console her, which we don't really get to see in most of the other versions. That was also a really nice touch that this film added you got to see more of their connection and understand on a different level why Emma is always willing to stay home, essentially. Because that is a big plot point in that she doesn't go anywhere. She doesn't know much life outside of her town. So that was a really cool thing to see. Johnny Flynn played Mr. Knightley. I enjoyed his Mr. Knightley. I've definitely enjoyed others more. Everyone has their favorite Mr. Knightley in every version. He actually read a bit younger 
than other Nightlies have in comparison to their Emmas, but actually he is age appropriate to Anya Taylor-Joy as Emma. The ages essentially that are referenced in the book more or less are the same as the film. It just, he reads a lot younger. The banter between Nightly and Emma in this is perfection. They definitely snipe at each other a lot and they have really good chemistry together. He was a very good Mr. Knightley. I just have my favorites, but like I said, everyone does. Mia Goth was Harriet and she was so pure and so sweet and they really beefed up Harriet's role in this film which is something that I actually enjoyed because in the book itself she is kind of more of a side character to Emma's major dramas that happen in the book and in this version I do really get that Emma really does care for Harriet and not just as kind of the charity case that she could be so that was also really nice to see in a touch that the book and some other versions don't get into as much. And then of course we have Anya Taylor-Joy as Emma Woodhouse herself. I've been a fan of Anya since I saw her in Split first and then The Witch and it's like she's taken off. She's a wonderful young actress and I really enjoyed her in this. However, this is kind of where the film is different from some other adaptations because I said it to my friend as we were watching it, this Emma is kind of a bitch. I've never really thought of Emma's character as that, but in this version, she totally is. She has an arrogance to her that, at least in the other versions, she has, but it's more blatant in this in that the other version, she's more just naive about things. Whereas this version, she kind of just knows that she's like top shit. And it a little bit took me away from the sweetness of the story. There's a lot of scenes where, especially in regards to Miss Bates and the look on Anya's face, I mean, I don't see how the character of Miss Bates wouldn't have been offended or turned off or felt bad just by how she's being looked at. She's not like a cruel, mean person. I don't really wanna say that about her character because she's definitely not in this version either. She's spoiled and doesn't really think beyond her own self in a lot of ways, which I know is very much the antithesis to what Emma's character is. However, the journey of the film, she gets humbled and she gets humbled a lot. <laughs> So she actually does make that journey and chills out and becomes the Emma we kind of all know. So that might be the biggest probably put off to book purists with this version. It is not the same type of Emma that you've seen in other versions or that you've read. Another thing about this version that I really enjoyed is that much of the dialogue is actually verbatim for the, from the books. So it's interesting to see these types of characterizations with the same dialogue and how the result is kind of different. So the proposal of Mr. Elton after the party is handled much differently than I've ever remembered seeing in any version and even remember reading from the book. As he expresses his feelings and she kind of is just like, I thought you liked Harriet. Kind of tells him that she's not really into him and all that. He literally explodes screaming at her, which was something that I was literally taken aback by because the whole time Elton, he's snarky and just the Austin anti-hero types where they're not really bad people, but they're just kind of ugh, and you just get a weird vibe from them. So to have him explode like that was just a lot. It was a very interesting choice to have that done. And I think while it's odd, it kind of goes with the Emma characterization that is in this film and how she acts towards people. Something similar in the infamous Box Hill picnic scene, as again, the exact same dialogue as the book and her interaction with Knightley after that scene, he literally also explodes at her. So it's very interesting in that this characterization of Emma is almost infanticized to being yelled at like a child because I mean, she kind of is a child. She doesn't really have a lot of real world experience even though she is 21. And those types of choices are very interesting. Post the Box Hill scene, you know, she is on her way back home and she's literally crying tears. Her father actually comforts her, which is again, something we don't really get to see. The argument between Emma Knightley in that Box Hill scene is wonderful. It just kind of almost, it, the escalation was kind of incredible and definitely not something you see in the books, even though the dialogue is pretty much the same. It's almost an acting exercise of like, how can you change this type of a scene and the tone of it just by changing a characterization or two? 
So that was really interesting. The biggest letdown in the movie was definitely the proposal scene. The infamous nightly proposal that he is in love with Emma and always has been. In the middle of telling her that he's in love with her, Emma's nose starts to bleed. It's quirky funny and it's a very interesting artistic choice, but I don't know how I really feel about it. I mean, in every version, you're waiting and waiting and waiting for freaking Knightley to tell her that he's in love with her and he does not love Harriet despite what she thinks and he's loved her all along. And when they finally, you know, have that moment and they finally, they usually kiss in the adaptations and it's just so satisfying. You know, it's the ultimate romantic comedy. We want them to love each other. We want them to be together because they're perfect for each other and that's the point. So to have it interrupted by that, and then right after that, she tells him she can't really do much about this because Harriet's still in love with him. So she needs to go make amends. So it's just like that iconic scene was changed. And I think part of it was because of the Emma characterization because they had to humble her even more. And the biggest change from the book comes not when Emma goes to Harriet. Harriet actually comes to her house and lets her know that she actually discovered the identity of her father. Her father ends up being a tradesman, which actually would have led Mr. Martin and Harriet to be a very good match because they actually are equal in status. And Emma essentially apologizes for basically being wrong twice about who Harriet was in love with and basically ask her forgiveness in meddling in her life. What's interesting about this one is that Harriet actually does offer that forgiveness and they're able to reconcile. It further humbles this version of Emma. And after that, of course, Knightley and Emma are able to get married and assure her father that she can stay with him and all that stuff. So it all still ends up in the happy ending. We do get our kiss, we do get our wedding because it's Austin, we have to have these things. So what is my verdict? Is the adaptation worth it? I would say that it is. There's a lot for the book purists to really latch onto and really love. However, there is some edginess to the characterizations that I think book purists might find interesting because it does show these scenes and this story in a slightly different way. And I do believe that movie fans would also love this because it is gorgeous to look at. It's very well acted. If you're in for your Austin fix and your period piece fix, this is it. But it's still accessible because everyone does know this story and it's entertaining. It has its funny moments and I mean, it's Jane Austen. It's really hard <laughs> to make even a bad Jane Austen adaptation. I know that they're out there, but it is still very hard. So I would say that this is definitely worth it. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave me a comment down below with some suggestions for this series. I have a couple ideas for this series on deck, but I can always use more. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye. How the... Starring... Starring... I decided to... I decided to title this... Um, and... and uh, that make it seem... Uh,